What's up everybody and welcome to my SummerSlam review and people let's get this straight here this was a very very long show this was longer than, I felt longer than Wrestlemania time almost this show started at like 4 o'clock if you want to count the pre-show because there are matches part of that all the way up to almost 10.05 at night time I thought I was going to go to 11 but holy crap, my god, I'm going to speak a lot on this show and I'm going to be ripping a lot of things. First off, we get um, a pretty much a repeat match from SmackDown the other day. A 12-man tag between American Alpha, the Usos, the Hype Bros, going against the Vaude Villains, the Ascension, and Brazanko. Pretty much same match, only just with... The Usos getting the pin, pretty much the same finish, really, with, you know, American Alpha doing their finisher. But Usos got the splash, and I guess they showed a little bit of tension between the Usos and the Alphas, but I don't think the crowd really noticed that much. This is a pre-show, people are just entering the building. Baron Corbin kind of entered, talking about Kalisto, he's a coward and everything. And that doctor's there to keep you safe, and, you know, I'm about making money. And I cost Kalisto his money and stuff, so I should be on fighting him at SummerSlam tonight. Uh, another match um, that happened was Sami Zayn and Neville going against the Dudleys. Uh, it wasn't much, just more tension between the Dudleys. Sami, I'm kind of glad at least he got on the card. Him and Neville won. Could it be a tag team? I'm not really sure, but hey, they were there, and... They had, at least Sammy had a match and they were on the card. I don't know why they had fans ask Sasha Banks questions. She was afraid of Charlotte, which makes no sense, even though she challenged her in the begin with. And then we had a match. Oh, yeah, Sheamus versus Cesaro. This whole best of seven series thing, I don't want to see seven matches out of them. Did they have a good match? Yes, but this, this whole kickoff show was over two hours long, folks. Let's get this straight. And Cesaro looked... Who were doing a lot of springboard moves off the ropes, even off that thing they had off the ring post, from the, uh, which looked cool since they added lights to it and everything, and he jumped off of it to sh uh, jump off of Sheamus. But Sheamus went with the broke kick. It's like I, I honestly didn't care that much. But as we move on to the main show, Enzo and Cass came out super duper over as usual in New York. His fans were, were chanting for Enzo, doing his, you know, always great on the mic and everything. You know, talking about New York and everything, sing, singing big lyrics. And that, you know, they got 99 problems, but Jericho and Owens ain't one of them. And then they did the soft thing, Kevin Owens, and Jericho kind of came out to a big pop. Um, pretty much, the match was actually really good in the beginning. I was a little surprised the heels went over. I did like the finish, though, even though it was kind of botched. With Owens going for the pop-up, and when he lifted Enzo over, Jericho hit the Jericho hit the uh, the code breaker to win the match. Even though it looked a little bit sloppy, and Jericho and and, uh, and Jericho and Owens celebrated, and Jericho was kind of funny. He said, "I love you" and everything. So I thought it was great. So I was a little surprised to see them lose. Sasha Banks versus. Charlotte for the women's title. Well, a lot of scary moves in this match with, you know, Charlotte dropping Sasha off the uh, top rope a little with that suplex. And I thought she was going to hit that, that razor's edge. It was about to look cool, I felt like. But Sasha hit it with a uh, Hurricane Rana or Frankenstein or whatever and pretty much took out Charlotte, which was a great, really good match. I'll say that. I was surprised by the finish, though, when Sasha had the bank statement again multiple times. But Sasha, but um, Charlotte rolled on her back, pretty much got out of her back and pinned Sasha and won the title, which Sasha only got the hold for three weeks. And, you know, I kept thinking, what if this is this, and I've said this before, what if this is going to be the same thing like in Brooklyn last year? Sasha walked in as the champion, but then she's going to not walk out as the champion. Same venue, somewhat the same time and place, except SummerSlam this time, same city. Walking is the champ, losing it, but then throughout the night, and you know, I don't know if this is true or anything, but throughout the night, people were saying Sasha's going to be gone for the next 30 days, and 
something it's the wellness program grand where she got suspended like everybody getting suspended nowadays anyway or i keep hearing now that she's leaving due to nagging injuries and i guess they're giving her 30 days off and maybe that's why the the um the finish because i was like wait sasha lost the belt again and there was a lot of scary parts of this match i didn't know who was going to come out on top it was like they were about to fall hard the bullet club kind of reunited backstage you know, them doing their doctor thing, they're going to say, we're going to beat up John Cena doing the uh, too sweet thing. Uh, Bullet Club was in the house. They wanted Finn to do it, but he walked off and he wasn't joining them. Miz versus Apollo Crews for the Intercontinental title was just kind of there. There wasn't a lot to say about this match. Cru Cruz was good. And tonight, like, um, he did a lot of cool moves. Don't get me wrong on that. A lot of cool moves, but it just, it just not really went anywhere. And the match was short. It just like, I don't know if they even had a lot of build coming up into this match. But like, it just wasn't really that interesting, really. It's just like, it, the match came and it went. You didn't see a lot out of it. Maurice got involved and pretty much Miz hit the skull crushing finale then. And won the match. Uh, next, which was probably the best match out of the night, was John Cena versus AJ Styles, and the crowd was over for both of these guys. Even though Cena was booed throughout most of the match, there were, you know, AJ Styles, Let's Go Cena, which was a, a crazy match out there. This was like match of the night quality, and it pretty much was literally the match of the night. After Cena, he was even pulling moves, he up. Canadian destroyer, I believe, in a, some move. I don't know what it was, but it, it, it's like he just held him almost, uh, almost into a fall away slam and just lifted him backwards and even hit the FU from the top rope. And Cena was going to go for another one, but AJ dodged it, hit the Styles Clash, hit the forearm, and he pinned Cena clean. And AJ bl bled from the mouth, but it, he, he won it clean. A clean win for AJ Styles over John Cena and I, I couldn't believe it at one point and Cena, Cena Cena pretty much you know got up after that people still booing but now this is what I feel like now and people yeah, let's look at every time Cena loses at one point some big match it's like it's the end of the world for him for some reason and I guess what it looked like it's the end of the world for him and stuff. Ooh. It looks like it's the end of the world and everything for him. He just like, we've seen this before with The Rock. How he reacted when he lost The Rock. How he reacted when he lost to Kevin Owens, I believe. And even, um, I don't know, somebody. It's like when Cena loses these type of one big match type of things, it's like he gets depressed. Like, you know, they, they talk about, you know, Cena left it all in there, man. He left a piece of him in the ring. Cause he took out one of his wristbands and just left it and never give up. So, I feel like we're going to get another John Cena Road to Redemption story again. Because this is what happens when Cena loses and he feels like he can't do it anymore until he comes back and then wins his match and gets the, the big payoff or whatever and look strong again. Because he lost at a SummerSlam. But overall, they used two had an incredible match. John Stewart, bad position he was in. He said, you know, this year I'm not going to be hitting anybody with a chair. As, as people chanted what to uh, John Stewart and everything. He said, oh, it's just, you know, old man belly. And I guess he was part of the New Day replacing Big E. And he did his routine since the crowd did the rest of it. Let's just say this, this match was just horrible. New Day versus... Um, Gallows and Anderson club for the tag team titles was bad. And I know it's just a lot of balls jokes and they're doctors now and everything. But the thing which was just weird. It's like they pulled, they pulled John Stewart in the ring. And they just, I don't know what, he was in the ring. I was like, why is he in the ring for? And they kept taking out the New Day. Then they were going to do the same thing they did to Big E and just... You know, pull him into the turnbuckle, I guess, you know, shatter his balls or something. 
which didn't make a lot of sense. Pretty much coming in after that. Shout out to Lord, they hit him in the crotch or whatever. Listen, the only thing good about this match was Big E coming out to a big pop. When he came out and stopped it, pretty much it was a DQ. And they beat up um, the, they beat up the club. And then Big E went over to the jar with the testicle stuff with his name on it. Drank it and spit it out, which was very nasty. And don't get me wrong, I like Jon Stewart. And Stewart likes wrestling, but he just shouldn't be involved in this stuff. Listen, I enjoy his comedy. I like this show. Especially, you know, I guess, on politics because he's actually making sense on it. You know, crooked cops and these idiot Republicans sometimes. And Fox News and destroying them. And people like O'Reilly and stuff. And Jon Stewart is really funny, but him and wrestling just aren't mixing together. He can be there and send us to watch, but just involved in the show was bad. This whole match was just... Why? Why? It just sucked. There was nothing there except Biggie getting the big pop and returning. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler, Shane McMahon, and Daniel Bryan were in the ring. This did not go out well off. So it's like both of them had a good pop at the beginning. But then it's like the match just went on. It just, like it just, it just happened there just to be there. It just wasn't good. The crowd was dead. Didn't barely pay attention to it. It was like, oh, what happened to Ziggler cutting these hard-edge promos almost? Getting like a fire into him. But now it's just like, it just like it was just there. The crowd wasn't into it. I think some now say this is like a mid-carded match. Just to be somewhere in the middle of the show. It's not like the WWE title wasn't even near the end. Really, that, that's what I, was odd to me. The WWE Championship couldn't even be near the main event. At least somewhere, at least before the main event. It's supposed to be the top title, but why not? And just like it just wasn't a good match. And I don't think people really believe Ziggler was ever going to win the title anyway. Like, come on, this guy's been buried for three years. But now, all of a sudden, he gets a title shot and shows some fire. But this, it's just it's just they buried him for so long, it's hard to believe Ziggler was going to win. And when he tried to do that thing off the top rope, the face buster thing, Ambrose landed on his feet, hit the dirty deed, won the match. And, you know, it's just like, you got to get better opponents for Dean Ambrose now. Because the Dolph Ziggler thing just ain't working. Um, Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Carmella. Naomi's entrance is very cool, by the way. Went against Natalia, Alexa Bliss, and I thought it was going to be even Marie to bring out, but it's just she's in the British Islands. Why would you put so much for a person that's been suspended? And now this is, I guess, is real, because I don't think this is an angle at all, because her husband's talking crap online over the whole Adderall thing she took. But they return Nikki Bella. I don't, I don't really care for Nikki Bella. I get that she's back off of her neck injury, and I guess she got a good pop. But geez, I don't I don't care. I have no fan of the Bellas. I'm going late people on the on the internet tonight saying delete, delete, delete. By the way, Matt Matt Hardy is a genius on Twitter tonight during SummerSlam. He was just just great during SummerSlam just saying we must delete this. We must delete that. That's what the crowd should have been chanting. We're chanting it at an NXT takeover, I know that. And it's like the match happened, but nobody barely reacted. I saw when Carmella came out, she got no reaction. Even doing a little moonwalk thing, got no reaction. It's like it was just there to be there. Another match, like it, it just it just happened to be there. And I guess they wanted to buffer it, but it's like nobody paid attention to the WWE title match before that either. And it's just like it was just a regular six woman tag match, and I guess. Nikki won the match with that forearm and some TKO. I swear John Cena did that move. My God, Nikki Bell was just calling out spots tonight like John Cena. Also, just, just spot, spots calling, spot calling, spot calling. Whew, it's just like, why? It just didn't, it just it was like, what, what was the point? It's just like, why really? She called all these, called all these spots and yeah, I guess she's a heel now. Because I didn't know why people cheer for Because, like, my first reaction was like, oh, no. They couldn't get anybody else tonight. And I said, what was Nia Jax doing? But then I had to remember this is a SmackDown match. And she's on Raw. And I said, well, we don't really have a lot of women on SmackDown, do we? So I guess they put Nikki Bella on SmackDown. I, I honestly just don't understand why. And I guess the heels just went over just because. But this match didn't mean a lot. Uh, another thing, by the way, Wale was in the crowd, so it's good to see him. Yeah, I guess he had a theme song for the show and everything. Uh, next thing, 
Oh yes, the let's get to one another bad part of the night, and this is what doesn't make a lot of sense. They talked to Rusev, and I'm thinking his matches are next. So I'm wondering how many matches are left on SummerSlam because this is a marathon show. We find out the Universal matches up next, title match, but the United States Championship is gonna be on before the main event. Let's think about that for a second. You have two world title matches, but they're not even near the main event. Not even behind it, at least. It's just like, why would you put the U.S.? When did, when did the U.S. title become bigger than the WWE title? And I know it's this universal thing they just made, but like, this is the first time you're crowning a new champion with this. And it's supposed to be a, a world title. Why would you... Why, why would you put the U.S. title before that? Like, why would you put the U.S. title ahead of the uh, Universal? And let's get be honest about the Universal title real quick. This is one of another bad parts of the night that people pretty much ripped in half. It was how the title was shown. This is just the WWE title that looks like the... It just looks like the WWE title, except it's painted red. So now the women's title, the WWE championship, and this Universal title all look the same with, with different colors. One is black. One is white, and one is red. This looks like a title that could have been made for Kane or even Marie. And the crowd ripped this belt apart. This belt sucks. And I, I and say, hey, hey, we want a new belt. New belt sucks. Red, I'm sorry, red belt sucks. Red belt sucks. Or red belt sucks. Red belt sucks. The title was in like people just didn't care and, and this is the thing Finn Balor and Seth Rollins actually had a good match and Finn Balor's entrance was cool but my god I wish he would never left NXT to win this title if this was gonna happen this title doesn't look like crap it's just a it's just a red belt it could have been made for Kane Eva Marie and the crowd ripped the belt apart I wish I don't know if they were singing Kurt Angle's song or barely Bill they was like belt sucks belt sucks belt sucks Belt sucks. Red belt sucks. Red belt sucks. So the universal title looks horrible, okay? It's a bad title. I know Seth Rollins has said something about this now on the internet about it. It's like TNA with the King of the Mountain title, or Legends of TV. It's the little red toy belt that nobody cares about, and now that WWE doesn't have a, a, the, a big red belt or something now that people don't care about. So that's, they, they're almost the same. The little red belt that nobody will care about. And Finn Balor won, and he had a good match. And he hit two of those stomp kicks, of drop kick things before he hit the coup de grace, dodging the pedigree and stuff. I liked how Sephiroth did the uh, suplex into the pedigree. But, you know, after Fat Balor did the coup de grace, it's glad he won. But when, he, when they went to him and showed that red belt on camera, people immediately... Boo at it, okay? The title sucks, alright? They all look the same now. The WWE, the women's, and the Universal look the same. A belt painted red. And the crowd ripped it. So no one cares for this championship. And they had a good match. It's just no one gave no crash for this belt. And, and then, here's another bad part. The KFC chicken commercial. Which they did on SmackDown. So let's get this straight. Your Intercontinental Champion is dressed as a chicken. And the guy that's supposed to be the number one contender for the for the WWE Championship is Colonel Sanders. And they had a match to promote KFC's chicken chicken thing or whatever. So I was surprised. I said, was this on SmackDown? And they taped this? Who thought that was a good idea? And let's get another thing about... Uh, oh yes, you have the Good Morning America plug spot. Yeah, why... If you, it's like they just had them win these titles and put them on GMA. Just we gotta put these titles on Good Morning America. That was just a marketing thing. But D, you know, Dean Ambrose, he can't be on the show, I guess. And he's the WWE Championship, but I guess only the new champions get to be on there. So, uh, so pretty much Charlotte and Finn Balor will be on Good Morning America, which I probably won't see anyways. We'll probably look on YouTube for it. But D, Dean Ambrose, he can't be on there, so he's a, he's a champion too. And then when we get to the U.S. title match, and here's the thing that doesn't make sense. Rusev came out, Roman Reigns came out, which no usual booze, but it's like um, Rusev attacked Reigns. They brawled with each other for almost, I don't know, seven, eight, ten minutes almost. So let's get this straight. 
We had the match on Monday for almost 20 minutes with a clean win. We couldn't put the U.S. title on the line on Monday. But tonight, we get a brawl. Just them brawling all over the place. And I don't think the crowd was with it. And the fans pretty much started to chant, We want Slater. We want Slater. After Reigns pretty much took out, we said then. And then the fans chanted, CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. And they all chanted for him then. So, it's like uh, the crowd didn't care. But then when Roman Reigns came back out the spear, we said one more time down the ramp, the fans did chant, one more time, one more time. So, I just wonder, like, why was the U.S. title before the main event? Why was the U.S. title before the main event? It's just, it just felt asinine, really, to why this was happening. So, Roman just beating up Rusev after Rusev attacked him. I guess he's defending his life or whatever. But Rusev attacked him. And I think the fans, I guess they were on Roman's side after they chanted one more time. But the, the fact that people chanted, we want Slater and CM Punk chants, nobody cared. I don't know if this was to protect Roman. Who thought this was a good idea to put the U.S. championship before the main event? But none of the WWE titles, though, for some reason. Not the WWE title, not that universal crap title either. Who thought that was a good idea? And in the main event, folks, which another very, I don't know what to say about the main event. It was very confusing with Brock Lesnar and Orton, especially to the finish. And yes, they would get a lot of this whole suplex city thing and stuff. Hell, you could sell, tell Mike Kyoto, you get Mike Kyoto to say, send us home, Brock, send us home. <laughs> and stuff. So it's just like, like we had to end the match already because this, this whole show was going way too long. And I guess they wanted to end it early. But once again, Brock suplexed him everywhere. He threw him off the, onto a table. Orton did hit a RKO onto the table then. But when it just got back into the ring, Lesnar did F5 him. But he took out his MMA gloves and then he started punching Orton and hitting elbows. Which I'm hearing now people on Twitter are getting banned for using this as a gift. And WWE wants to get pissed at it now and de delete people off Twitter or suspend them for, for what they did. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. So I, I don't know why WWE should be mad themselves for this this long ass show they did, which wasn't that good. And then Orton was bleeding all over. You know, I got, got to get scared for Orton at one point because my God, the gash on his head was big, and I heard he had to get ten staples for his head. So it was very scary, and he did walk out on his feet. But they had to end the show. In the, in the, pretty much had to end this match as then the fans chanted Goldberg, Goldberg. People think Goldberg was coming out. <laughs> I'm like, is anybody going to come say for it? And I'm thinking, Goldberg, Goldberg. So it was the TKO. Shane McMahon came out then to check on Orton, but Lesnar wouldn't let him through. They pretty much got into a stare down. And then Lesnar F5 Shane. So now we're just going to go. We're setting up Shane McMahon versus uh, Brock Lesnar now. There was blood and everything, but I guess Lesnar's now healed now. But it's like, who's... Who the people side of that? I said they went from Suplex City to RKO, and I, you know I guess people really weren't think you know Brock Lesnar was gonna lose because of the whole drug thing and stuff. At least punish him for that, which I still I've said this many times in many videos now. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, come on, the guy couldn't take a test because he's a part timer. Part timers can do whatever they want. But I'm not gonna get into that because I've already ranted on that for too long. But. Are we now going to get Shane McMahon versus Brock Lesnar? And what's it going to be? Some people think it's going to be Super Shane. It's going to be like him versus Undertaker, which he still lost, but Shane still got to run the show. And it's like Brian couldn't help him because Brian can't wrestle anymore. So am I supposed to believe now Shane McMahon is going to come back and get revenge on Brock Lesnar and beat the living Jesus out of him or something? So I don't know what to expect Shane McMahon to do or Super Shane like he did at WrestleMania this year with Undertaker. Jumping off hell in cells and stuff of how insane how insane that was. So I don't expect what we're gonna get out of this. It's just the finish was just very confusing. I didn't know what was going on. Some people wanted if it was intentional or did he sandbag Randy Orton and did it on purpose or didn't know his own strength. I didn't know. Overall, this whole show was just too long. The show was almost over six to seven hours. This stuff started at four o'clock to almost six. And this is counting the pre-show, like I said in the beginning. 
So I, I wanted the show to end at one point. And by the way, I will be posting up live reactions. I'm sorry there will not be any John Cena versus AJ Styles reaction because my my computer froze, unfortunately. And it's not going to let me put the video on there. And that was the best match of the night. And it's a shame we're not going to, I can't get that one up. But this, this show went incredibly long. Just, just long. And it was a lot more, it was more bad than good. You know, Matt Hardy was entertained, say, with the red belt. Delete, 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 delete. The finish just, it's just, uh, this pay-per-view was too long. NXT Brooklyn was better. So once again, NXT is proving this that they're better than SummerSlam. Okay, with this stacked up card, it was just too many bad things. WWE Championship was underwhelming. It just didn't feel big anymore, and the crowd didn't seem just seem dead throughout it. The Universal Title killed it for the Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, which actually had a good match, but just the belt—it looks horrible. It's just—it's a red belt, and the fans pretty much spent half the match chanting at the belt, saying this belt self sucks, red belt sucks, red belt sucks. Red belt, su red belt sucks. So it, it was just bad. And didn't a brawl with 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 um, um, Rusev and Roman Reigns? Why didn't they do that Monday and then do the match tonight? Why do the match Monday and then do a brawl tonight? And then the fans chanted, "We want Slater and CM Punk." What the fuck? I, I'm not really big fan of Nikki Bella really returning. You know, she's got her neck surgery, but I'm not really a big fan of her. And they still try to do the Eva Marie thing, even though she's really, literally. Suspended right now, and what what does it mean? Because I was surprised Sasha will lost the title. It's like, but I think she's gonna be gone for the next thirty days. It's like, it's like this. The best match of the night was John Cena and AJ Styles throughout this whole card. They had the best match on the show. It was a fantastic match throughout this whole show. I would imagine if that ended the show really. But it was just like it was a lot more bad than good. Even that KFC commercial at one point they showed. Which was really a match, like, the Intercontinental Champion and the guy that's fighting, the number one contender for the WWE, WWE title, the number one contender, is one is in a chicken suit and one is Colonel Sanders. Let that sink in for a minute. So, it's just like, why? This, this show was just bad, like, screw that title, screw the Universal title, the red belt sucks, no one gives a shit about that belt, okay? It sucks. You can't justify it and say it was good. It's so like I said, the WWE Championship, the Women's Championship, and now this Universal title all look the same with different colors. One white, one black, one red. I don't even know if they're going to I don't even know what the other titles are going to be for the tag team, whatever they're going to put on SmackDown. And um, the tag team in the... Um, the other women's title. I don't know why we need more belts now. Because they'll be seen. They can't even crazily come up with a good belt. With that bullshit they put on. So it's just like the TNA King of the Mountain one. The T the belt that no one. The little to red toy belt that no one gives a crap about. And this has to go with the Universal Championship itself. So it's just bad. The, the tag team titles was just bad. With the John Stewart thing. Big E got a great power. So that was the only thing good about that. The women's match just came off. And the from the six women, it's like people just kind of quiet, really, and didn't seem to care. Miz and Cruz just looked like it just went by. It just it just happened and it left. And Enzo and Cad versus Jericho was good. Let's keep Jericho or Jericho as a team, and I like that team. Let's keep him as a team. I was surprised they got the win over them in their own hometown, but the finish did look kind of cool and it was a good match. As for the pre-show matches, they kind of came and went by also. So this was a very just too long of a show, and you just kind of get drained. I think people were drained after the AJ and Cena match, because even I was like, can we just get to the main event already? Because I didn't even, I almost forgot about the Rusev and Roman Reigns. I forgot it was still happening. I didn't know they would put it on this late. I thought the show was almost going to go to 10, 30, 11 almost. But if you want to see the better show, go watch Brooklyn. Brooklyn was better. So they did a better job, I felt like. But I'm out of here. There will be live reactions, like I said. Just no AJ and John Cena match because of technical problems. Computer. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.